Right now on XFM, a lady who in 2012 is going to catapult herself into the kaleidoscopic stratosphere of musical superstardom fueled by the release of her unbunctiously anticipated album Born to Die, ladies and gentlemen, Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Oh my God. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. We had that awkward thing when I walked in there because I'm from Ireland, you're from America, we're both in London and I we, we kissed on the one cheek and then out of habit I went for the second cheek because that's what they do in London. I did that too though. But I thought you weren't quite there yet because I'm still, you know, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. We had that awkward little in-between Well, moment. there was something about you. I knew you weren't really going for the second kiss, but... But it happened anyway. It happened. But here we are. It's all good. <laughs> Lana, I'm going to cut to the chase. You've already broken my heart. Shut up. No, you have, right? Last night, here's me. I stroll down to Coco. I've got my Lana Del Rey. Oh my I've got my Lana Del Rey poster. It's like, oh, she's going to sign it. Maybe she'll spit in me if I'm lucky. Uh, and you, you were sick and you weren't there and it was very sad. As many people were sad. I know. What happened to you? I'm so sorry about that. And... Everybody was just disappointed. Oh, I know. And even, uh, I've been waiting to see a lot of people I've been talking to, too. You know, I've been talking to friends and fans, and I was waiting to see everybody. But, um, you know, I had the Made of Ale sessions earlier in the day, and by the time I finished, I knew that I was not going to make it to Coco's because yeah, I've yeah. sort of been sick ever since I came off the road, and it c- c- kind of comes and it goes. I had walking pneumonia on the tour, but I didn't know. But anyways, but I'm so Sorry, I'll oh, sign no, no, your no, poster. No. Okay, no, great, get the poster signed, awesome. <laughs> okay. And I said it was, it was monumentally disappointed. And Orlando of the Maccabees, who was who were on also, they also expressed their supreme disappointment. Oh. Um, but no, in, in a great way, in a great way. Well, that's nice. Let's, let's, we'll talk with the album shortly, but let's bring it back a little bit okay. now. Because we're just all getting to know each other and it's lovely. Mm-hmm. I read an interview of you, 18 years old, you're in New York. Mm. You're doing all these kind of open mic thingamajiggies and that. When did you decide, I'm definitely, above everything else, I'm going to be a professional singer? Had you decided when you were 12? Mm. And was it- That's a good question. I kind of needed a lot of help with that decision. I mean, I felt like it was sort of a selfish, unrealistic choice to make, um, being like a singer. And I also didn't know anyone who was like a real singer. Yeah. So I kind of read books about people who did what they wanted to do and how they did that. Um, I didn't. You know, I never really made the serious conscious decision like this will be my life because I was afraid to get too attached to that vision because I thought if it didn't end up happening, it would probably break my heart. But when I was 18 and 19, I was playing open mic nights in Brooklyn and on the Lower East Side. And um, I just knew that I really loved to do it. I was a a nervous performer, but um, a lot of the boys who, who would play at the same open mics kind of took me in and said, you know, oh, come play for me tomorrow. Come open up for my show. So that's what I did. And every week... When I'd play, you know, for someone's show, then someone else would ask me to come play for their show. So I did that for a couple of years and kind of didn't really have any ambitions until I got signed to my first independent record label. And um, the very next day started working with David Kahn, who in America is like a super producer here, too, actually. Um, So maybe that was one of the first times where I thought, wow, someone of his caliber actually thinks that I'm good. You know, geez. Yeah, amazing. I don't know. Yeah. Are you from New York or did you move to New York? I was born in Manhattan. I was born in New York and then I left when I was young and I came back when I was 18. And what was it like coming back? Was that a big move? Was that, did you say, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to be a singer. <laughs> See you later. It was like heaven, you know. Every day I woke up in New York was a good day. I was so happy to be there. But I had been away from home at that point for a long time. So it wasn't a big transition because I left when I was 14. Okay. So, so I was just happy to be there. It is one of the best cities on the planet. XFM. XFM Drive Time, we're here with Lana Del Rey, who has just brandished a massive dildo. Lana, why do you carry that around? That is disgusting. <laughs> Mate, it's because I knew you were going to be here. <laughs> I can buy it for you. <laughs> Stop playing dumb with me, buddy. <laughs> oh my God. You have this thing that a lot of singers and musicians and actors and things want, but very few possess, which is like mystery and allure and a lot of people ask questions about you and you have this kind of whole aura around you and I read I read loads of mad stuff about you I read this one thing that you are a professional trapeze artist not true in Alabama what other other mad stuff have you heard Uh, I mean to be honest the only stuff that I've heard has just not been true I mean I really haven't heard anything yet that is true and I know what you mean about the mystery I mean I look for I'm interested in people who I think are mysterious but the funny thing is is that me more than most people I've lived such a straightforward life you know I'm actually 
you know, there's really nothing yeah, too yeah. mysterious. No, but that, that's awesome. I'm kind that's of great as though, basic because, as it gets. Because people want that. Do you know what I mean? They strive to have it and they try to be, and you just have it. It's well, that's nice of you to say. I mean, you know, I mean, some of the good stuff that they write, whether it be real or fake, is very complimentary. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. God, no, you've certainly got this wave behind you. Um, yeah. Born to Die is out on the 31st. Yeah. Proud of it? Oh, I love it so much. It's like... You know, I I haven't done that many things in life that I love, but the record is gorgeous. Yeah. There isn't one song that I felt like I compromised on, you know, like lyrically or melodically. And um, because I didn't really feel any pressure, I really just felt like it was very personal, very much me. There's nothing about it that I wouldn't stand behind. Not that it matters, but yeah. it just happens to be true. I didn't realize till recently that Born to Die and Video Games and Blue Jeans, you said they were kind of a trilogy about this one dude and his, <laughs> his, his effect on you and your relationship and what you thought yeah. um is he adele style is he aware of that does he have you talked to him about it does he like is he aware of the reaction it's getting and what is adele style what what what, what she's happened? very she's very vocal about this one person she? it's about this person and and we talk about it and now we can have a laugh about it but the time there was so much emotion going I on i see and, he doesn't know his mother knows we're in touch um okay. but no no he hasn't pieced it together and kind of gone hey this is not me. really beyond that trilogy then the rest of the album what what's the the story behind the rest of the album I, I mean each song sort of has its different backstory but um i don't know you know like there's there's a couple of concepts i guess behind like the general theme of the record but mostly this record came about ironically at a time when i had really let go of my sort of personal ambitions of being recognized as a good writer and a good singer why I well, because it had been so long, really, since I started. And so I figured, you know, from now on, I'll write for myself and just for the for the sake of writing, just yeah. because I love it. And um, <clears throat> ever since I started doing that, not that I ever really strayed from that path, but when I really started indulging in just writing things because I liked them, I really started to win, you know, just personally. Yeah. And um, I mean, a lot of the record really doesn't have, it doesn't mean much. You know, some of it I wrote when I was in California and I would just take drives from along the Pacific Coast Highway from Santa Monica to Malibu. It was kind of a, it's so nice for me because it was like hot, hot summertime and <clears throat> where I come from, it's really cold. And I was just enjoying and being like in tropical weather and sort of using that time to like think back about the way that things were and write some of the record about just like snapshots of my life and try and paint pictures like with words just for myself to look back on them. Yeah. It's just really f for me, kind of. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, video games is obviously the one that, that gave you this initial tidal wave of, <laughs> of recognition and stuff. It's quite a, it's very mellow. You it know, is. It's just a vocal and it's a piano and it's quite haunting. Did yeah. You, were you told or did you think that maybe it wouldn't do the business it's done or have the impact it's had? Sure. Yeah. I brought it to everyone and they were just, you know, not happy. It was another five minute and 35 second love song with no instrumentation. <laughs> Uh, that's what I was told. <laughs> that's a bit and harsh. so, <laughs> yeah, well, <sighs> anyways, <laughs> but you know, I took it home and I made a video, um, for it anyways, put all my favorite things in like time lapse, pink roses and black and white footage of kids skateboarding. And, um, I mean, again, nothing that really meant anything, just kind of like things I thought were beautiful, just sort of piece them together. I didn't really makes sense at the time. Did you have to fight for it then to get it, to, to, to push it out or did someone just no, have a moment to go? No, because okay, yeah, yeah, I was on my own YouTube channel so no one really gave a whatever that I just put it up. But um, I mean, of course, people started noticing one day by day. I think, you know, view, views started jumping. I think no one really expected that. That was about in June, yeah. May, May. It has been such a crazy ride since then. You've got, you know, for obviously the Born to Die videos is so bombastic <laughs> and OTT and it's brilliant. And it's, all it's bling. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like Kanye obviously loves it. And you've got all these kind of celebrity endorsements. And it, it's all a massive amount of activity in a short space of time. Mm. Have you had time to stop and just step back and go? This is bizarre. Are you enjoying it or is it just, well, work, 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 and maybe in a while you'll enjoy it? I think it's probably more the second one, yeah. to be completely honest with you. Um, just because I find that usually when I get finished with one thing, it's time to do another thing. Yeah. Um, 
But, you know, it is a big difference, like having music being at the center of my life again, because it hasn't really been that way for some time. Yeah. So um, it's definitely different. Do you have friends, like old friends before this all took off, texting, like, aha, I saw you on the telly today. I saw you in the paper today. This, that, and the other. Like, people must be getting a kick out of it. That's exactly right. Yeah, they think it's just hilarious. Especially because we didn't really talk too much about music, because why would we at the time? Nothing's happening at all. So now they're like, you were really serious about that singing thing. <laughs> Where you so it's actually you know I have good friends they're not in music but they are they are funny can you uh, have you got can you still walk around on mm. the streets pretty okay yeah without my makeup on I don't really look like myself <laughs> so it's not a problem <laughs> Do you, I take, take do you have mine. massive OTT shades? No. Because you know when you need to wear massive OTT shades, then it's really gone it's stratospheric. It's so funny. Well, I, I, used to wear a ba- you know, I used to wear a baseball cap every day, but then my manager told me that here no one wears hats. That was years ago, but like, base, you know, like... Oh, so that's a dead shirt giveaway. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Actually, <laughs> I, I haven't had time to absorb the album properly. I need to listen to it a few more times. But on the first listen, early favourite is National Anthem. Do you like it? Love it. Um, really? Yeah, particularly love the opening Did line. Did you um hear the um the real version of it? I can't. I'm not sure if you listened to the actual, like the one with fireworks. Yeah. Really. yeah. Ah. Oh, it's amazing. I uh, love what's, it. This is such a horrible cliche question, it's but right. for the purpose of beautiful sound bites, we'll do it anyway. If the world <laughs> impending Armageddon was ending tomorrow, and you said, "People, you can only listen to one more track off Born to Die." What's your What's the current track you'd say? Make sure you listen to that. Um, I would say hands down, probably "Summertime Sadness." Yeah, it's just my favorite. Um, yeah, it's about nothing, but I like to put it on in the car <laughs> and just drive drive along the ocean. I mean, it's just heaven for me. I love it. And Larry Gold, it's amazing. I had this guy, Larry Gold, who's been in classical music for 30 years. He was conducting the Philadelphia Orchestra, like, <clears throat> all throughout the record. And I was telling him, I was explaining to him how I wanted him to help me soundscape the record, talking about, like, I wanted him to, you know... I wanted him to try and get the feeling of the American Beauty soundtrack mixed with like early Bruce Springsteen in the summertime. And he did it. It's crazy. The strings on it are just, they're exactly what I thought. So Amazing. Yeah. Um, Lana Del Rey, plans for 2012. 2012. Ugh, I don't have any. I don't know. Just touring and appearing and being wonderful and riding the wave. I'm going to go to California in early February and um, play some in-store shows. But after that, I'm not, I don't think I am touring. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> Just chilling right out. Yeah. A very final question. What are the odds, do you think, from one to a million <sighs> that we might fall in love and get married and live happily ever after? I prob- I'm getting you re- that are you? Do you really, is that a serious question? It is now. <laughs> When's your birthday? Uh, it's the 15th of April So you're uh, Aries Well then the chances They're very good Oh this is going well <laughs> This is probably where we should wrap it up <laughs> And we'll talk off the air Lana Del Rey Born to die hey, 31st of January It's been a pleasure Thank, Thank you. you very much Thank you